Hello, my name is John, and today we're in the cockpit of the MI8 again. In this video, I want to show you how to use the Doppler navigation system. So let's get started. Um, first off, I will switch to the co-pilot seat because uh, most of the controls are uh, there because um, the Doppler navigation system would be operated by the co-pilot during the flight because it's quite uh, work intensive. Anyway, let's look at the controls you need first. And that's basically this switch up here which allows you to turn on and off the Doppler navigation system and power it. And um, it takes some time to warm up. And once it warms up, uh, the operating light on the back panel will um illuminate, as you can see now. Um, warming up takes about uh, two to three minutes, and um, it only will start to warm up after AC power is supplied, as far as I know. Anyway, once it war it's warmed up, uh, you can use the control panel down here to set um, a drift angle. You normally don't set that, n it normally only displays that. You can also set uh, the flight pass kilometers and the map angle. And uh, you can turn on and off the tracking as well. Additionally to that, the Doppler navigation also has an um, indicator down here. And this shows the drift angle. Basically shows the difference between where your nose is pointing at and where you're actually moving. This is interesting, for example, if you have a high crosswind or if you're not, uh, if you're flying in a crab angle or something like that. And you can also, or should also select between uh, the underground you're over. And you can either set uh, if you're over ground or if you're over sea, that will um, adjust the Doppler navigation system accordingly. You can also perform a test if you want. Not uh, really necessary though. And um, down here, currently showing 306 kilometers per hour it will show the ground speed, also measured by the Doppler navigation system. Okay, and now let's uh, plan a route we can then input into the Doppler navigation system. And for that we will have a look at the map. And you can basically use any map. I'm just using a, a picture or a screenshot of a Linus Germany's Navits map here. And we will start off on our farm I've placed. And uh, we will head towards the river and uh, in this river there's like a half island and uh, I will use that as our first waypoint just to show you how you would adjust uh, once passing a waypoint and then we continue over to that uh, small civilian airport inside Kutaisi and for our first leg I measured that the, B, uh, the heading is 260 degrees while the distance is 11 kilometers and for the second leg from the waypoint to the destination the heading is 313 degrees and also with a distance of 11 kilometers. Okay, now let's go ahead and um, with, the uh, develop, um, with the device down here, we can set the distance and um, we want to reduce the pass because we are flying towards it and increasing it. Um, it's a bit weird, but um, just make sure if you want to navigate like this, you would want to go ahead and uh, reduce uh, the pass and then you fly towards it and it will count up to zero because it's negative, because it's a way. Anyway, that's just a technical thing. Just uh, click on the off button here. And we also want to set the angle and the first angle will be 260 degrees. Perfect. And now we also want to turn it on. Now, uh, switching back to the pilot seat, we can make uh, also another adjustment here. And that's not really um, necessary in a, um, for the Doppler navigation system, but it uh, serves us as a uh, little aid to make it a bit easier. We will set um, the double needle to the same bearing we have set the Doppler navigation system to, so we can easily see if we're flying towards our destination or uh, if we're flying towards the right heading or not. Anyway, with that all set, we're going to head and um, will take off and uh, then we will make a left hand turn and fly towards um, the 260 heading as uh, briefed and then we will uh, once we arrive over that half island we will make an adjustment and I have set a bit of a rainy foggy weather which will um, prove the best situation for training the Doppler navigation system because in uh, very fair weather where you see for kilometers upon you don't really need it I guess 
especially if you have a map available. But in this weather, it's quite handy. So let's take off. Just bring the aircraft uh, into the air, or the helicopter. Not, not the best takeoff, but it will do. And we will turn to the right direction, accelerate a bit, and once we have um, stabilized and trimmed the airplane or the helicopter, uh, we will go ahead and uh, hop over to the co-pilot seat. And um, you definitely see it's a two-man chop, or it's, it's much easier if I have a second guy. Fortunately, that's not available yet, but maybe soon. I'll also take it a bit slow, so that we don't um, arrive there too fast, and I have enough time showing you stuff. Okay, and you can see now we're stabilized on a heading of 260 degrees. A bit, um, bit to the left, but that's fine. And uh, I want to just switch him out. Perfect, and uh, let's hop over to the copilot side. And now we can already see the flight pass kilometers are counting down. And the drift angle is showing a bit left, about 0 0.3 maybe. And that means we're left of our flight uh, pass, so we will make a bit of a right hand bank to correct for that. Basically, we want both uh, numbers, the drift angle and the flight pass uh, kilometers, to reach zero. And once both have reached zero, or once uh, we're at the point where both are at zero, this means we are over our waypoint, our first waypoint. Or at least we have traveled um, exactly those uh, distances and kilometers. And now we will just wait a bit. And uh, we will see now the drift angle is about uh, 0 0.2 maybe. I would guess, and uh, the flight pass kilometers is about 0 0.7, uh, sorry, 7 kilometers, and it's counting down steadily but slowly. You can also see on the drift angle indicator, we are not drifting to either side, so the compass heading we see on the compass uh, also is the same as our flight pass heading, so we know we should uh, turn to the right a bit, else we will be drifting too far off. And uh, our ground speed is 174 kilometers per hour. Which is quite decent. Okay. Now, only um, five kilometers left. Should uh, get there soon enough, I hope. We're not drifting too bad. Zero point something. S well, acceptable. Uh, acceptable. And um, yeah. Now uh, we just uh, fly there until we get closer. And we can al already see the river in the distance. Okay. And um, once uh, we arrived over the river, I will activate the active pause because it's a bit difficult to set otherwise, especially when trying to explain stuff. So, um, yeah. And I guess we can just simulate that our co-pilot is uh, doing that for us. So should be fine. Okay, as you can see now, the drift angle is quite um, good. We're a bit to the right now. can make a bit of a left-hand turn to correct for that. And uh, the flight pass kilometers is uh, two, so only two kilometers to go. And um, yeah, everything should be quite fine. Now we, we might have corrected a bit too far to the right before, so we're quite right now. And um, we can actually correct for that, we're quite close, so... I mean, the Doppler system is um, only as accurate as the pilot flying, and um, I'm not too accurate, unfortunately. But um, our waypoint has been over there. We ended up about maybe five kilometers away from it, which is not too bad, I guess. With some practice, I guess uh, I should be able and you guys should be able to get that much better, that down much better. Anyway, let's uh, do an active pause. If I can find the key press. Oh, sorry. Okay, never mind. The, the key combination is not working, but um, the only thing we want to do now, we want to increase the flight pass kilometers again, again to 11. Okay, and we want to set the new map angle or curse uh, to 313 as we have measured out before. We get probably some inaccuracy because we uh, didn't stop for that, but oh well. There we go. And now we want to make a right hand turn to heading 313.
And um, because uh, we started the turn quite late, we will get a bit of a drift. Yeah, you see we're currently drifting two kilometers um, to the left. But uh, this means we're just turning to about heading 340. And uh, this will slowly bring us back onto our course. And I mean, uh, I guess you get how you can play with the uh, Doppler navigation system and um, just use the data you get from it. It's quite easy. Uh, it's just um, setting new data takes a bit of time and um, you're really missing a second pair of hands there, I guess. So but with some practice, uh, you can sure manage that, I guess. It shouldn't be too difficult. And um, it's quite fun, actually, and uh, especially on some of the campaign missions where you fly, for example, over 50, 60 kilometers over the mountains and you don't necessarily have the... Yeah, or it's quite hard to tell uh, the valleys apart. The Doppler navigation can give you some very useful advices and uh, information because it can you can easily see if you should fly further, if you start to descend there or wherever you are. Gives you a very good information. Okay, and as you can see now, um, we are just about uh, one kilometer left of our pass. So we will wait just a bit, and we will continue on this heading just a bit before we make a left turn. And before we fly heading 313. Okay, drift angle is at less than one kilometer now. Um, getting very good. Okay, and I will now do a left hand maneuver to heading, uh, let's get back to the pilot seat, 310 approximately. And um, then we just fly down this heading. Perfect. And uh, we will wait until um, the distance reaches um, less than two kilometers. The the flight pass distance currently we're at five kilometers, so so shouldn't take us too long. And. Um, the airfield should come up uh, somewhere in front of us any moment now. Only four kilometers left, approximately. I mean, we lost a bit of uh, accuracy because we were uh, doing that uh, in flight and um, the change was not done instantaneous. But as you can see, the airfield uh, appears on our front right there. Uh, sorry, front left. And, um, and the Doppler navigation currently shows uh, that we're three kilometers away, which is not too correct. And um, we're about a uh, half a kilometer to the left, which is uh, quite okay. I mean, it's not 100% accurate, especially if you set it during the flight. But um, if you give it a try during one of the campaign missions where you can uh, set it on the ground, because, for example, you land and then you get new navigation info, you will get quite close. And I mean, especially in weather like this, um, getting at least some information on a uh, how far you have to go until you reach your destination and stuff like that, especially if the destination doesn't have any radio navigation aids, is very, very useful. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I might do an, a second video on the Doppler navigation system to a later point because you can do a bit more with it still. But um, this uh, video should conclude the basic navigation and uh, the easiest form. Thank you very much for watching and uh, fly safe and uh, see you in the next video.